Hello, let's continue our Sudoku adventure with The Empty Canvas by Zetamath. So we have normal 6x6 Sudoku rules, so in each row, each column, and each 2x3 box, we are placing the digits 1 to 6 exactly once each. We also have arrows in the grid. These arrows are attached to a circle. The digits on an arrow sum to the value in the circle. So if this was, say, 1, 2, 2, that would add to 5, and we put a 5 there. All right. Um, in addition to that, we do have this cage here. Digits can't repeat in the cage. So normally we could put a one here and a one here. Sudoku would allow that, but we are not allowed to do that because we can't repeat within this cage. And that's it. Those are the rules. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. Okay. Um, I actually want to start with this arrow here because it's the longest one. <laughs> So the minimum I can put here is 1, 2, and the minimum I can put here is a 1. That adds to 4, so that would be the only way to get a 4. Um, the biggest we can be is actually 5, because there's a 6 sitting here, conveniently. So the biggest we can be is 5, meaning we have 1 degree of freedom. How do we express 1 degree of freedom? Well, this cell here, that's easy. This could just be 1 bigger. But this as a sum can only be 1 bigger, meaning from 1, 2, the only way to get 1 bigger, we can't do 2, 2. So we'd have to do 1, 3, meaning we always need the 1. All right, these ones do point down, ah, and these can't be 1. So where does 1 go in this box? Well, these can't be 1 because they're the sum of two digits. The sum of two digits can't be 1. And these ones point down because we need a 1 in one of these two. So there's a 1 in one of these two, and that points back up, making this a 2. And that uses up our 1 degree of freedom, meaning that we do add to 5, and this has to be a 1, 2 pair. So we are the minimums. <laughs> Wasn't this my example? That's pretty funny. Um, this two looking down, this two looks down. Oh, wow, yeah. And this can't be a two because the sum of these add to at least three. But this can be a two because we can do one and one here. And that places this one. Uh, places the one in this box. These look up. Gives us two and one there. Uh, was that my example? I can't remember. I think I did two, one, two. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, well, this can't have 1 on it anymore. So this is at least 2, 3, adding to 5. So we have 1 degree of freedom. So we must have a 2 on here. Because if we're going to add to 6, we're not doing 3 plus 3. We'd have to do 2 plus 4. If we're adding to 5, we have to do 2 plus 3. So, and this can't be the 2. So this must be the 2, and then that means this is 3 or 4, depending on whether we add to 5 or 6. Neat. Now there's no 1 on here either, making this at least 2, 3 adding to 5. And again, it does need a 2 on it, making this the 2. And this is a 3, 4, adding 5, 6. It's the same exact logic. So we end up with a 3, 4 pair here. We need 5 and 6. This 6 tells us the order. That's 5, that's 6. This is going very nicely. This is 3 or 4. These are 3, 4, 5. That's not a 5. When are we getting the non-repeat rule here? Actually, I'm <laughs> just thinking about that. The non-repeat rule is helpful now. Where does this, whatever digit we put in here, where does it go in this box? Well, it's not going to repeat in the row, and it can't repeat in the cage. So this digit has to end up here or here, and we know what those digits are, 1 and 5. So this can't be a 3 or a 4. Another way to put it is a 3 or a 4 to remove that digit from all this whole box. Or another way to put it is we do need this to be a 3, 4, 6. That's not a 6. And so no matter where the 3 and the 4 are placed, they eliminate from here. So however you want to think about that, this must be a 5. I saw it that way, which is neat. Now 3, 4, 6 could be any of these two. Um, that's not a 5. Um, how about this triple? 2, 3, 4? That's not a 2, so the 2 is placed. 2's are actually done. This is 5 or 6 for the column and the box. So down here we need a 5, 6 just by our roping. Um, this is a 3-4 pair by our roping. How did I know that, right? This um, We need we need a 3-4 pair to end up in this box somewhere. Oh yeah, it's just a 5-6 pair there, but anyway. I knew, that, I knew that these had to end up over here because they couldn't be the 5-6, and that means these are the same digit. But anyway, you could also just look at the box. Uh, this is 3-4-6. Um, why do thing easy way when you can do thing hard way? Duh. I'm getting the feeling I might have to color three fours. Um, in fact, why don't we do it now before we accidentally discover that we don't have to? So, what am I what am I coloring here? Well, whatever this ends up being in the solution, it's a three or a four. We're going to call that green, and this has to be the other one, the other three four, which we're going to call purple. 
So we don't know whether green is three or four or purple is three or four, but we know they're different. And so now we know this has to be the purple three, four, and this is the green, making this the purple, this is the green. This is purple. Um, so does anything see like a purple and a green? This, this sees a purple and a green. So because this sees a purple and a green, or I guess another way to put it is where's purple in this row it has to be here, but this can't be three or four. So this has to be the other digit, the one. Actually, that finished ones. I could have just placed that. Anyway, I saw it the way I saw it. Um, this is green. This is purple now. Um, green and green. Green's in one of these two. How do we re reconcile this? We have all of our purples, and then green's limited to here. Oh, maybe this being 5, 6, is that helpful? Um, does it have to do something with our sums? Have I do I have a clue that I haven't used? Maybe the not oh the non-repeat in here. We have a three four pair in here, so this can't be three or four. So that's six. So this actually ends up being green, which makes this the six, and then this has to be green three four. Okay, before I okay good. Uh, I finished the coloring before I accidentally figured out the digits. So we can actually resolve these five sixes, and now we have to figure out whether green or purple is three or four. Well, we can just use these arrows. So purple has to be four. And then green has to be three, and we're done. Nice, got to color in his ATMF puzzle. <laughs> and there's a three in the corner, shooting confetti. Cool, and a very nice puzzle is math. I enjoyed that. Um, some interesting spots. I like how this flowed, where we needed a one in one of these two, and then these were blocking the one. That made this a two and this a, and the one two pair here. Then came back around and said, well, one of these two has to be a two. How's that possible? Well, this one's the only one that can be two, giving us the one one, which flowed to this. And this, which had the same logic. Really nice flow there. And then this non-repeat came into play a couple times. So that was neat as well. Cool. Well, let me know how you did. If you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.